Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And it's Pete J. And we're still down here in sunny Florida to end off our road trip in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Pete, it's a wonderful place. We've had some history here, but today we're hoping to make some history, hoping to put, put away these water bullets that have been our bane for this season. A similar situation with the sirloins where they got us they got a two-game lead on us in the three-game season series. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you don't want to do that too often. Um, we do have a, the series against the Herbisaur, so um, right now are one and two in uh, the Nemesis we're split with. So uh, we definitely don't want to drop all three to the water bullets. We want to be able to walk out of here with a win and our heads held high. But, uh, yeah, the water bullets just seem to have our number this year. Well, speaking of which, we could talk a little bit about that last game real quick. I will go just kind of recap it for a bit here. It all starts off when, uh, well enough for Deshaun Levan. He puts his first K on the board in the bottom of the first when he puts away Baca Harris with one out. And then with Trespass Wade to end the inning. But Justice Mann figures him out in the bottom of the next inning. He jumps on this low pitch and rides it over a center field wall. And quickly, it's one nothing water bullets. <clears throat> Levon then gets back at the water bullets. He drops Colton Ayala to make it three on the day. And then in the top of the third with Dexteras on first, Bertha Banks pounds this fastball out over the right field wall, and the B Wolves take the lead from the water bullets two nothing. Or I'm sorry, two to one. <laughs> I can yeah. I can count. <laughs> <laughs> You got to read your own script there, Tommy. And I'm, I'm literally reading it. I wrote it down. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, unfortunately, D Miners decides to take matters into his own hands in the bottom of the third when he grabs his high inside fastball and turns it into a game tying home run. It looks like it was one row forward, maybe four seats over from the one Bertha Banks had just hit beat. Yeah, they were putting it out to the right field, uh, right field uh, bleachers there. Still in the bottom of the third with a runner on third, Trespass Wade decides to add to the score with this outfield single, bringing in another run and putting the water, water bullets out in front again. But they weren't done, Pete. Just this man comes up with two outs and a runner on second, driving it in the right center field, and it's now 4-2 to two water bullets. And on the next pitch, Harry Bracketeer jacks one into the outfield, bringing man in from second. And now it's five to two water bullets. Four runs in that inning, and it was going to be something the B-Wolves found extremely difficult to try and overcome. Yeah, and, and the B-Wolves uh, had a lot of, the, I guess the uh, water bullets have enough speed where it was uh, uh, anything hit the outfield and uh, runners at second were able to score pretty much at e with ease. So um, something the uh, B-Wolves will have to keep in mind tonight as they go up against the water bullets again. Maybe... Maybe come in a little bit, play a little bit more shallow, try to cut the ball off earlier and, and get the get the throw in quicker. Sounds good to me. Well, they but what do I know? <laughs> right, right. I've just been yeah, here for 40 <laughs> games. A try they did. Uh, from an unlikely source, they got offense where they normally go for defense. When Deshaun Levan puts an RBI on the table with this nice liner to center field, cutting the water bullets lead to just two. Then he gets back on the mound at the top of the fourth, putting away Mirthright to rack up his fourth K of the day. And then, with one out and two strikes at the top of the seventh, Bertha Banks steps up and once again, Pete, she racks up her second home run of the game. Again, with Dexteras yes. on base, and she brings the B-Wolves back in it by tying it all up. This one went on the same line, but about 12 or so rows further back. Yeah, and that home run uh, gave Bertha Banks eight on the season, and that put her in the lead um, for most home runs on the B-Wolves. Ooh, I didn't know that. Good way to yeah, get in there with those stats. <laughs> That's what they pay me for. <laughs> <laughs> she pays, she passed up Buster Biggs, or at least that's what I'm waiting to get paid for. Well, now I got some competition. Well, Dusty Winder comes in to relieve Levon in the eighth inning and gets to work on his first strikeout versus Justice Man. And then he gets Ayala for out number two. But Smoke Snow crashes the party when he drives one in the left field, bringing in a runner and putting the water bullets out in front again. And, it's and the worst part about that 
was there was a really funny smoke show joke that went in there, and uh, it would all went for naught because uh, <laughs> uh, Snow well, got a single and, and scored a run. So uh, Snow. <laughs> Well, it's a lead they wouldn't relinquish. In fact, they added they add to it when pinch hitting Lennox Ramsey steps up and puts one out in right field, making it a 7-5 Water Bullets lead. Winder then finally slams the door shut when he drops D minors to end the inning. With a fastball to the chin. <laughs> the game then ends with the <laughs> B-Wolves threatening with a runner at third. Buster Biggs comes up and pops one out in right field. It's caught, and the B Wolves take their second loss against the desperate water, Florida Water Bullets team. Pete, uh, yeah, like you were saying before, these guys, if they play, if they play well, and we don't, they could, they could leapfrog. Yeah, they could, they could. These are these are big games, that, um, and they're coming up at a crucial time. So, uh, B Wolves got to remember where they are and what they're doing. And uh, you know, in that last game, it seemed like every other hitter for the B Wolves just didn't hit very well. I don't know why that was, but yeah. it just it didn't seem to work out. <laughs> well, so coming to today's game, we're we're finally at game 40 of 44. Just four games left after this. We're hoping the new patch comes up after so we can bring our stats over to next season uh, pretty yeah. soon. I think it will. But uh, we're looking at the B Wolves who are 19 and 20. Going against these water bolts for a 17 and 23, quickly, closely showing up quickly behind us. The Wolves are contact specialists against the extreme speed demon water bullets. Starting on the mound today for her second to last regular season game is going to be the right hander Fran Japani. It's good. It's good to know she's locked in. She throws the ball pretty hard. She puts a good enough movement on it, and she's pretty accurate. And she's up a little bit in those. Like I said, she's playing well recently. She's got a winning record at three and two, so she wants to keep it that way. She's got a 3.66 ERA. She wouldn't mind seeing shrink down a couple basis points. And she's got a 1-1-2 whip. That's right. And uh, the notable players for the B-Wolves, again, the uh, tried and true Laura Franco. She's held that spot since she came to the team, and she's still in it now. She's got uh, excellent power. She's got better than uh, average ability to connect at home plate, and she's got uh, better than average speed on the base pass. So when she gets on, she can and make things happen. She's hitting 362 on the season with five home runs. Haley Dexter is the superstar shortstop. Is back out in right field today. Um, he's got better than average power. He's got great ability to connect and great speed on the base pass. He's hitting 310 and uh, with four home runs. He's kind of had an up and down season this year. So hopefully he'll be able to start turning it on now as we start to get moved towards the uh, playoffs. Buster Biggs, the left fielder again, we've said it before, he's in the past 11 games just been tearing up the league. Um, just uh, You can't get him out. You can't get him out. <laughs> <laughs> he's got uh, great power. He's got better than average ability to connect at home plate. Then he's got great speed on the base pass. He's hitting 421 and uh, and seven home runs on the season. So Those are the notable players the B-Wolves will have out there on the field for them today. Well, those players are going to be facing off against starting pitcher for the Water Bullets, the right-hander Brentwood Garrison. Brentwood Garrison throws the ball fairly hard. He's got pretty average junk on the ball. He's not as accurate as most, but uh, he's got a 4-3 record as well, so he's, he wants to preserve his winning record. His ERA is a 4-8-2, and he's a 1-4-7 whip. Yeah, and the notable, notable, the, the notable players <laughs> for the Water Bullets. <laughs> the Water Bullets. Excuse me, uh, Scott, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sis narrows at second base. She's locked in, and her her uh, attributes are pegged. She's got excellent power, excellent ability to connect, and she's got better than average speed. She's hitting 285 on the season, seven home runs. You got D Miners in left field, who uh, played pr pretty well in those uh, that that last game. He's got better than average power. He's got pretty good ability to connect and pretty good speed on the base pass. He's hitting 287 with two home runs. And then Kent at first base seems like maybe she's. Uh, She's not completely healthy. She looks like she's maybe hurting a little bit, but she's got great power in the uh, batter's box. She's got less than average ability to connect, though, and about a little bit better than average speed on the base pass. She's hitting 233 with five home runs. She is, and uh, we're going to look at the lineup for today. Uh, <laughs> I'm not there. Okay, looking for the lineup today, getting that notice from the assistant coach. It looks a little something like this, Pete. Hanley Dexter is good old Dex is going to be starting off batting first. He'll be playing shortstop as well, followed closely behind by Billy LeBoink. William LeBoink will be in right field. Buster Biggs will play the other side of the outfield and left. 
He will bat third. Cleanup batting fourth. Alora Franco at first base. Batting fifth. The new home run leader on the the Beagles, Bertha Banks. She's also locked in, so the, we'll use that to our advantage. Two very important people locked in today. Freddie Knox will bat six. He'll play second base. Giving Gina Torrens a little bit of a break. She's still tense. Not the best season for Gina Torrens, so looking forward to her coming back at some point. Magic, yeah. Magic Moore will bat seventh and play center field. They'll be followed by Eliza Peck, who will bat eighth and catch. Still filling in for Steve Monstour, and Fran Japani will take the mound. Like we say, she's locked in. She also throws the four finger, the two finger, the curveball, the slider, and the changeup. I love that repertoire. Me too. She's been pitching really well for us um, in the, her last couple of starts. So I'm looking forward to this one. I'm hoping she can uh, she can put some of these guys into a tense mode before we get out of here. Sounds good to me. Me nice, too. Nice little afternoon game here at El Viejo. One last time this regular season before we head home and finish her off. Yeah. El Viejo has not been nice to us this year. No, Freebooters beat us too. It's a good place. Water Bullets got Harrison right field, Miners in left. Cisneros at second base, Wade in center. Man at shortstop, Ayala at first. Bracketeer at third, Ramsey catching and Garrison pitching. Coming up in the top of the first, Hanley the next, Darius, Billy LeBoink, and Buster Biggs. Brentwood Garrison will set up shop on the mound, and we'll get this one going as soon as the ump says those magic words. Here they come. Now back, the shortstop. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Dexter is a shortstop hitting 310, four home runs, 372 RBIs. That's in there for called strike, strike one. Ooh. Oh, that's inside, almost got a hold of Dexter is there. Two straight balls, two and one. There's a smash. The Cisneros picks it up, makes the throw to Ayala to retire Dexter is one out. Billy LeBoy comes up like in the high pitch. It's tough to read. Uh, Garrison here. He's got that, that sidearm pitch, but uh, LeBoink's going to try and get some signals from the first base coach. Looking for what he's looking for. Uh, Garrison. Boy, it seems really loud, although everything seems to be gonna turned throw, down. Going to throw his uh, fifth pitch when he's ready. Here we go. And we're underway. First one's in it for strike. Second one comes right in. He gets it's a hard Billy LeBoink, but it's going mostly up into center field, waving it off. Is Wade going to make that second out? Yes, sir. Buster Biggs, the left fielder, is neutral and fit. He's hitting 421, seven home runs, 26 RBIs, two quick outs in the first inning. That one's one. That's a smash to the shortstop. Man who picks it up makes the throw in time to get Biggs for the third out. So coming up in the bottom of the first, Baca Harris. D minors and Ada Cisneros. Japani will take take the mound and set up, getting ready to now her way here. The right fielder, number 58. Baca Harris hitting 256 with one over the wall this season. 16 RBIs. He's mostly a contact hitter. Watches the first pitch, but goes outside, and that's. Thought it was a little bit outside, but the ump gave it to her. Japani starts the game with a strike. We're underway here in the bottom of the first. Still no score. Two quick strikes, and she's in the driver's seat against Harris, who played well against the uh, the Buzzards. Smashes that curveball. Foul, luckily, for Japani. 0-2, the crowd gets into it here. They like that. Japani's going to... Nice pitch, high and inside. Freddie knocks over to grab it for the first down. That was a good final pitch there by Japani, who jammed him up and inside. Yes, yeah, she did. D Miners is hitting 287, two home runs. I think we've seen both of them. He's got 10 RBIs. Good contact hitter. Watches the first pitch come in for a ball. Want to know the count? To D Miners. Granger Potty getting ready to throw her sixth pitch. Gets her signal from Peck. Winds up. Let's it fly. Gets it in there the lowest part of the strike zone. Strike one. The crowd didn't like it, but I don't care. <laughs> She's. <laughs> She is locked in and looking good. Another two strikes. Here's where she does her damage. Just got to get him swinging at trash. 
Ooh, he doesn't chase trash. So now she's going to be a little imaginative here, but a good thing Frangipani is swinging at a strike three. That's a girl. Now batting, the she could put the best away, and she's going to have to. Adis Cisneros comes up, and she's got power. She is locked in. The outfield's going to go deep on her. First one misses inside ball one. Second pitch misses ball two. The infield's going to go... Mm. Guard the lines for Cisneros. Known as a whiffer. Strike two. One and two the count. In Japan, or I'm sorry, two and one the count. Japan trying to figure out where to go here. Cisneros getting ready to line one up. Hits it hard to left field, but it's going high. Buster Biggs back. And it's out of here. Over the wall. Cisneros jacks that one. <clears throat> wow, that what an arc on that thing. It went 374 feet. It's her eighth home run and 24th RBI this season, and the Water Bulls jump out to that early one nothing lead. Number 87. Trespass Wade comes up at 265 with three home runs of his own. More of a power hitter than a contact hitter, about average. He pops that one up in the right field. Billy LaPoint is waving him off in the smog and gets that third out to end the side. Well, coming up in the top of the second, Alora Franco, Bertha Banks, Freddie Knox. Garrison threw eight pitches in the top of the first. Water Bullets with a one to nothing lead. Now batting. Alora Franco, the first baseman, neutral and fit in 362, five home runs, 21 RBIs. It would be nice for her to take one out here and even this thing up. First one glides inside wow. for strike. Oh, one the count. Pete thought that was a little inside. That was definitely outside. One apiece. That one's right in there. She swings early, pops it up, running back as the catcher. Yep. Ramsey's going to pull that in. Now Too the early. Baseman, Bertha, Bertha Banks, the third baseman, locked in fit, hitting 322 with that new eight home runs on the season. 21 RBIs. That first pitch is up. Ball one. There's a smash along the third baseline. Foul. One and one. That's in the gap between first and second. Baca Harris will pick it up, get it into second base, but Bertha Banks is on first with a single. That's our first uh, hit of the game here. Freddie Knox comes up hitting 375. He's got good contact. He's got a runner first with only one out. Hits that one hard, but it's a line down the right side foul. Oh, one to count to Freddie Knox. That one misses. Go, She's go, going, go, Bertha go. Banks is going for second. She's going to slide in there safe on a wild all right, pitch. All right. From Brentwood Garrison, pitch number 17. Swing ah. miss, strike two is a little bit late. And that one's high, good eye, ball two. Locked up a two apiece with one out, top of the second. Hits that one hard, and that one's going, and and uh, what's her face is coming home. She's going to slide in, makes it safe, Pete. Right. Tyson came up. Bertha Banks. All right, way to go, Bertha. Magic Moore, the center fielder's neutral and fit, hitting 360 with three home runs, 17 RBIs. Freddie Moore is in there with a stolen base. Runner at second with one out, and Magic Moore is standing in there. That pitch is in there. Count is now one and one to Magic Moore. That's a roller to the shortstop who picks oh, it up. What's he doing? Makes oh. Uh, what, what happened? I got chug. Oh no! Ooh, dog uh, limit. Double play. <laughs> I swear I did not see Freddie Knox from the moment he left second base till he rounded he was almost home. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to continue to broadcast. I think that's what it's got to be. It's got to oh. be Justice Man Colt oh, Nyala coming up in the bottom of the second. Shortstop. God, that makes me mad. God. <laughs> okay, Justice Man 212 with 5 home runs, 14 RBIs. He's a shortstop. That's in there for called strike. Strike one. Japani's up to 15 pitches already in the uh, bottom of the second. That's to Bertha Banks. She'll pick it up, make the throw to first, and get Justice Wade. So Col Colt Nyala coming up. Colt Nyala playing first base for the water bullets. He's hitting 188 on the season. Yuck. <laughs> Well, we were in a you know we were in a great position there, and I just you know space running mistake. That's ball right. one, strike, uh, uh, no balls, one strike. That's popped up into center field. Magic Moore is under it. Didn't have to move very much. 
<laughs> he makes the catch for the second out, and Harry Bracketeer, the third baseman, he'll step in. Neutral and fit, hitting 200 with four home runs, eight RBIs. Score is tied, 1-1. One, one, one. That's fouled off along the first baseline. Out of play. No balls, one strike to Bracketeer. Swing and a miss. Bracketeer swung right through that one. No balls, two strikes. Bracketeer's in the hole. Two outs in the bottom of the second. Swing and a miss. Bracketeer goes down on strikes. That's a K. Coming up at the top of the third. Eliza Peck, Fran Japani, and Hanley Dexteris. Garrison's up to 22 pitches, giving up two hits and one run. B Wolves, one run on two hits. Water Bullets, one run on one hit. Now batting. Eliza Peck, the catcher's neutral and fit, hitting 222 with four RBIs this season. She she's doing better than she was most of the season. Watches the first. Oh, it makes it inside for a strike. Oh, one oh one on the count. She reaches out, pops that one up, foul, but it's gonna be grabbed by Al at first base. Yeah, this is barely playable. Fran Japani, the pitcher, steps in. She's hitting 308, two RBIs on the season. That's in there for a called strike. Strike one. That one's high. Ball one. One and one to Japani. Mm. That's popped up into center field. The center fielder's out there calling everybody off. Makes the catch. Trespass Wade with the catch in center. Bounce. Wow. Henley Dexter comes out. He's a tough out. He's over one on the day. Hopefully going one for two. Ooh, he smashes that one hard to center field. It's going back. But it's going to be caught short of the track by Wade again for that third out. Dang, nab it. All right, well, coming up in the bottom of the third, Lennox Ramsey's first at back. Brentwood Garrison, the pitcher, and Ibaka Harris, the leadoff man, will be back up. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Japani's thrown 21 pitches with two strikeouts, giving up one hit. The score is tied 1 1. Lennox Ramsey, the catcher. She's, she's a, stepping into the she's box. He's a, a power hitter. Oh. I'm talking when I should be <laughs> Well, let me talk for crying out. I want to know the count. The Lennox Ramsey. Bottom of the third. One apiece for both teams. Strike one there. And we're even up at one a, at one apiece. Frangipani getting ready to throw her 24th pitch. Throws it. Ooh, he gets the, she gets the top of the strikes on there. One and two. She's wow. ahead in the count. Oh she's looking for her 25th pitch. Gets the signal from Eliza Peck. Winds up. Throws it. Swing him a strike through the beautiful slider, Pete. There goes the bat toss. True. <laughs> I was going to say, she threw her bat. She should be out of there. <laughs> but with Garrison, the pitcher. She should be in the showers. <laughs> He's got more uh, more power than most pitchers. He can put one out. Buster Biggs running over. Makes that grab for out number two. Baca Harris comes up. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Baca Harris. Generally a good contact hitter. Japani throws the first one to him, misses high and inside, just off the hands. Ball one. Two outs in the bottom of the third, one on the count. Low and away, that one makes it in there. Strike one. Crowd really reacting to every pitch here. Pops that one up high inside. Laura Franco's going to run over and grab it if she doesn't run into Baca. <laughs> Two, three. Heading in the top of the fourth. Score still tied at one. Billy LeBoy go for one. Buster Biggs 0 for one. Laura Franco 0 for one. Garrison the 28 pitches with giving up two hits. Come on, B Wolves. Make these guys work here. Billy LeBoy. Billy LeBoy playing right field for the B Wolves. He's hitting 358 on the season. He favors the high pitch. That's in there for a cold strike. That's off the handle there to Justice Man. I don't think it's just a smash. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a back, well, anyway. So yeah, Buster Biggs comes up. That was a bad pitch to swing at for um, Billy Blank. Now uh, Buster Biggs, you can't expect him to go over for the day. Watch the first pitch come in, strike one. Oh, on the count. Second pitch comes in, strike two. Oh, and two the count. It's in the driver's seat. Brett Garrison swinging him ah. with a bad pitch, a three pitch strikeout. <laughs> <laughs> Rising fastball. Alora Franco, zero for one hit. 359 with a five, five home runs, 21 RBIs. Two quick outs in the uh, top of the fourth. Mm. Garrison is on right now. He's up to 34 pitches. Oh, swing and a miss. And Alora Franco's in the hole 0 and 2. There you go. She gets a hold of that one. And Cisneros picks it up, makes the throw to first. 
to retire the side. Wow, Garrison is rolling. He's here. reeling. It's really going to be a battle of the pitchers. D minors. Ada Cisneros, one for one with a home run. A trespass weight, 0 for one. Coming up against Japani, who's thrown 29 pitches with three strikeouts and a hit. Now Score is still tied, folks. 1 1. D minors is tense, but fit. Tense but fit, playing left field for the water bullets. That's a smash, but it's foul along the third baseline. No balls, one strike. That's in there for a ball. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, what, what it was. Oh, no. Oh, my. That's going deep, 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 and that's out of here. Right, right over the Las Idiotas sign in left field. That one traveled 374 feet. And that's his third home run and 11th RBI of the season. D Miners goes deep. Ada Cisneros now who's locked in and fit. She hit a home run her first time up and the Water Bullets have taken a 2-1 lead. Japani went from being locked in to neutral. Count is even, one ball, one strike to Cisneros. Allen's low ball, two. Two balls and one strike. Cisneros, the second baseman for the Water Bullets. She is solid at second base. That's a uh, ground ball in the center field, a clean single for Cisneros. So they've got a runner at first. Trespass way. The center fielder today. No outs. Cisneros at first base. There's a shot. That's going to roll into center as well. And very quickly, there are two runners on. Waterboat's threatening here with a runner at first and second with no outs. Justice Mann, the shortstop, steps in. He's 0 for 1 in the day. And the pressure has come up a little bit on Japani. That one's low, ball one. Throw back to the second baseman. He kind of muffed the ball, but luckily it didn't go anywhere. So the runners were unable to advance. Ooh, it's waiting on that one. Buster Biggs makes the catch and throws the ball into second to hold the runners who are unable to advance. So still runners at first and second, but one out. And Colton Ayala, the first baseman, steps in. Fooled completely on that pitch. No balls, one strike to Ayala. Follow. Allen's low. Evens up the count. One out in the bottom of the fourth. Water ball with a one-run lead. That one's low, too. Two balls and a strike to Ayala. Swing and a miss. And Giappani got one past Ayala there, so evens the count at two now. Swing and a miss. Ayala goes down on strikes. That was a huge strikeout for Japani. Runners at first and second with two outs. Bracketeer, the third baseman, steps in. Two outs playing the batter. That's in there for cold strike. Japani is going right at these hitters right now. No balls, one strike to Bracketeer. That one was outside, which was good because he anticipated that one. Mm -hmm. Count is evened up. That's a little low. And Pike picks it up. Oh, oh yes. It to the wrong way to go. <laughs> oh, I meant to do that. Did, it, did I just say she threw it to the wrong base? I meant she threw it to the right base at the wrong time. That's it. That's it all. <laughs> so in the top of the fifth, Bertha Banks one for one. Freddie Knox one for one. Magic Moore 0 for one. Garrison has thrown some pitches. He's had some strikeouts. Bertha Banks is locked in and fit. Boy, I'd like to see her tie this one up again, Pete. Misses inside. Whoa. Way to get out of the way there, Bertha. 1-0 the count to Bertha. That one's in there, and she smashes it hard line drive, but it's caught at the wall. Oh, come on. Come on. Second baseman, <laughs> Freddie Knox, the second baseman. One for one with a single and an RBI. Ah, I'm back. To, I can't get it out. Ball. Allen's outside. Ball one. 1-0. One oh. That one's high. Ball two. That's in there for called strike. Garrison's locked in right now. Up to 42 pitches. Two balls, two strikes. Oh! Oh, just caught the inside corner for a called third strike. Freddie Knox goes down on strikes. Dude, he threw three straight there to finish that off. Yeah, he's doing, Brent Garrison's doing well. Pitch number 44. Smash to Magic Moore. That's going deep enough, and it's gone, Pete. 
The game is tied. Way to go, Magic Rip. Man. About time. Jeez, <laughs> oh, Crush is that one. 403 feet to right center. It's his fourth home run. Only his fourth and 18th RBI of the season. And the B-Wolves are back in it, Pete. Way to go, Magic. Eliza Peck, the catcher's 0 for 1 today. Neutral and fit in 217. She's been slumping a little bit as of late. Takes the first pitch low. Ball one. Uh-oh. Ooh, just off the uh, tip of the bat. Ayala is over in the foul territory, makes the catch to retire the sides. But the B-Wolves pick one one more up, so it's 2-2. Uh, two -two. Harry Bracketeer, Lennox Ramsey, and Brentwood Garrison all stepping up in the bottom of the fifth. Japani's at 47 pitches with four strikeouts, and giving up two hits. And the two of those are home runs, so it's you just got to be careful with these guys. They do hit the long ball. Um... Harry Bracketeer comes up again. He's uh, mostly power, about average power, a little less than average contact. So we'll see what Japani does. Throws it, glides the first one there for a strike. One on the count. Bottom of the fifth. Now we got a 2 2 ball game. Check swing. Strike two. Japani's quickly in the seat. Number 40. Likes where she's at. Winds up. Tosses. Strike three. Three pitch strikeout. He never swung the bat, I don't think. Pete. No, sir. Lennox Ramsey comes up. She's 0 for 1. She's got good power. Not very good contact. So uh, Japani can get movement on the ball. She could drop her. She's throwing 50 pitches here in the fifth inning, which isn't too bad. It's 10 pitches an inning. Gets that curveball over the outside corner. Strike 1. Crowd didn't like it. Japani did. Should I do it? I don't should know. Should I do it, viewers? Should I, should I do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't bean her. Tom, no. Tommy yeah. can't see. <laughs> All right. Inside coach strike two. I had, the I had the reticle right over her head. <laughs> oh, and two the count. Let's see if she puts her away. Strike three. Swing and strike. Wait, right, there goes the bat toss. Two quick K's. And now she could get in Brentwood Garrison's head to close this out before he goes back on the mound. Like we said before, pretty good power for a pitcher. But can he chase that breaking ball? He does not in that first one. Strike one. The pressure's up here. Chapani's going to try and put him away. He puts movement on that, but doesn't get it quite in there. We're one and one with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. That one drills it in there. Nice two-finger split. Makes it inside corner. Swinging strike two. One, two, the count to Garrison. Hoping to get out right here. Swinging a miss, strike three. Three Ks in a row, Pete. What an inning. That's it. Coming up at the top of the sixth brand, Japani, Hanley, Dexteris, and Billy LeBonk all, LeBoink all over for the day. Garrison at 46 pitches with two strikeouts, giving up three hits. B-Wolves, two runs on three hits. Water Bullets, two runs on four hits. And we got a tie game. We do. Japani, old for one hit. She's hitting 280. Oh, she's a, I'm hitting. She's a good contact hitter for a pitcher. Pete. She's, she's good for anyone. Watches the first pitch come in for a strike. Second pitch outside, ball one. Good patience. One knotted up at one apiece. That one's her pitch. No. She reaches up, but she pops it up to Cisneros in second base. No. One down. She's fired. Get her out of here. <laughs> Hanley Dexter is 0 for 2, hitting 306. Come on, superstar. This is what we pay you for. That's in there for a cold strike. One out in the top of the sixth. Oh, that one's ripped foul along the first baseline. Two strikes. That one's low. One and two. Garrison seems to be trying to stay away from Dexteris. There's a smash into right field, but right at Harris. Baca has to step up a little bit and make the catch. Boy, these, uh, these, the side of the lineup's got to start putting it together. Billy the Boink's 0 for 2. Hoping to go 1 for 3 at least. First pitch. Whoa. Way, get out of the way there. The Boinker. Second pitch is right in. He smashes it, but it's fouled on the right side. One apiece. Top of the six. Hits that one hard, but it's right to Cisneros. It's a 1-2-3. What a game so far, Pete. Dead grab. Yeah, the water bullets are tough, man. They are not going away easily. Baca Harris 0 for 2. D minors 1 for 2 with a home run and a strikeout. Ada Cisneros 2 for 2 with a home run. Japani at 57 pitches, 7 strikeouts, 4 Ks. And we're still locked up at 2 here. Hazy day here down in Florida. Baca Harris, the right fielder. That one's inside. Harris made that catch in the top half of the inning. Evens the count up at one and one. That 
that swing and a miss. And Baca Harris finds herself behind in the count. One ball, two strikes with no outs. That's fouled straight back. And he will get another pitch. One ball, two strikes. Here it is. And there's a roller to Bertha Banks. She's going to pick it up. Double pump, make the throw across the field to Franco to get Harris for the first out. D minor is the left fielder, neutral and fit. One for two with a home run and an RBI. The home run I can take, the RBI I can't. <laughs> That's in there for a cold strike. I'm split, but I'm splitting hairs. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one, no balls, one strike. There's a shot. Oh, well, she can throw it. Ah, she held it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Again, I got a little, little lag there. Bertha Banks with a hot smash from uh, the last batter was able to throw him out after a little uh, chugga chugga choo choo. Two outs. Ada Cisnero stepping in. She's locked in and fit, hitting 294. She hit a big home run earlier in the game, too, to start the scoring. Put the water bullets up one to nothing. Since then, the B Wolves and Water Bullets have fought to a 2 2 tie. The count is now two balls, one strike with two outs to Ada Cisnero. And that's a flare. And oh, foul ball. Bertha Banks gave it her best shot. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Cisneros known as a whiffer around. Oh, and she doesn't even whiff. <laughs> she just <laughs> left the bat on her shoulder. Um, Buster Biggs, a lower for a Franco and Bertha Banks stepping up. Garrison up to 57 pitches with two strikeouts, three hits, and the score still locked up at two. Two ball, uh, two to two. Buster Biggs, the left fielder, neutral and fit. 0 for two on the day, hitting 416 on the season. Biggs has really been on a tear for a while here. Takes the first pitch low, ball one. There's a roller to man at short. He picks it up, makes the throw to Ayala to get Biggs. And uh, Garrison gets a little bump in his mojo. <laughs> Laura Franco's yeah. also, also 0 for 2 on the day. She touches the first pitch, come in low, ball one. Good patience there by Franco. He's going to wait till he throws something good. Ball two, hasn't happened yet. Tyler Garrison. It was, ooh, they're right in there. She crushes it, but it's foul. Giving him a, an idea oh. what might be coming. Instead, if she hits it high, shortstop goes over. Justice Mann catches it for the second out. Now back, the third base oh, man. Buster Biggs, the third baseman, locked in and fit. One for two with a single. Had a two-run two home run. Two-run two home run game in the last one. Oh, and Ah, evens the count at one and ball, one strike. There's a smash, and yes. I think Bertha yes. Banks has gone deep in, Tommy. <laughs> Holy cow. I remember when we started our careers, the La City Otas. That's <laughs> right over the sign, 410 feet. That's her ninth home run, 22nd RBI of the season. Bertha Banks may mess around here and get herself on the board with the most home runs in the league. She loves it here in Florida. And that one, she punished him for putting that right where she, where he should not have gone down the middle. Freddie knocks up now. Watch the first position of a strike. It's now 3-2. Beeble's lead in the top of the seventh. That one outside corner, ball one. Knox is patient, one apiece. Hits that one hard Surely. into his own dugout. One and two. Punches that one. It's on the ground to Ayala at first. Tosses it to Garrison and ends that side. Yuck. All right, so uh, B Wolves have gone up. 3 2. Trespass weighed 1 for 2. Justice Man 0 for 2. And Colton Ayala 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Japani's at 69 pitches, 8 strikeouts, and giving up 4 hits. Trespass weighed center fielder's neutral and fit. He's known as an RBI man around this, around this, around the pool. Around this place. I would, you know, I, I think, Pete, has every run so far been a home run? Yes. What a what a get five home runs the only way they really get on they haven't been able no team has been able to put together enough hits quick two strikes by Japani against trespass Wade here pitch number seventy two way outside Wade wasn't going to go for that one Wade's mostly a power hitter good contact as well Brian Japani thinking about it winds up lets it fly hits that high curveball into the dugout the V Wolves sticking at one and two no. Right down the middle, and it's going to drift foul over the b -Wolves dugout. Three rows back. He didn't like that pitch. Pitch number 75 looks like this. Swings and fouls off a nice slider on the outside corner. Pitch count coming up. Hits that one with a little liner to Franco. He's going to scoop it up and on the run, run it down herself in that first out. 
He wasn't gonna. Uh, no. Here comes. Wasn't gonna let me strike him out. Here comes Justice Man. I think he's old for two on the day. Frangipani still got a little bit of gas in the tank. This is outside ball one. Crowd's getting into it here. They want Justice Man to tie this up. That makes it in for a strike, and now we're even at one apiece, and now Man has been released. He's got five home runs on the season. So Japani's got to be a little careful. Ooh, the slider misses outside. Ball two, two and one. Here comes pitch number 80. Low and inside strike two. Nice split finger. We're locked up at two apiece. She's going for out number two. Swing of a strike three. She's still putting K's, Pete. Late game. Colton, Colton Ayala comes up. He's up. Oh, and he goes down. They're going to pull Colton Ayala and bring in backup first base person to, to pinch hit Amelia Kent. Amelia Kent is not quite 100%, but like we said before the game, I think she's one of their notable players. She's a real good power hitter. A little bit of contact. She's got power against lefties, but she's facing uh, Japani, who's a right-hander. So the outfield's going to go deep for Amelia Kent. First pitch, check swing, strike one. I think we saw Kent play out in Colorado when we were out there, Pete. She looked good. She anticipated that one. It goes high to right field. Billy LeBoink back. Oh, it bounces off him. It bounces off him. I think he jumped him. He didn't have to. He could have caught that one at the wall, and he it bounced off him. He doggone it. That, that should have been the third out. Here comes Harry Bracketeer over two. He's got two outs. The runner at second base. She's just got to put away Bracketeer, and we'll get a... A reliever in in the eighth inning. She could do it. She knows it. She's in control. Racketeer's got more power than contact. He's not great. He anticipated that first pitch. Slider inside misses. The pressure is up here in Florida now. Water bolt's threatening. Low misses that one. Two and oh the count. 85 pitches under her belt. Number 86 misses inside ball three. And now Japani's in a tough spot. Three and oh to Harry Bracketeer. Pitches out on that one. And walks him. And now we got. She's going to get to Lennox Ramsey, who's 0 for 2. Good power, but poor contact. They're going to pull Ramsey. They're going to bring in Ariel Parker, left fielder. She's going to pinch hit. She's more power than contact. She's a good power hitter, not a great contact hitter. So Japani can put movement on the ball. She can get her swinging at bad pitches. And here's her first pitch. It's a little liner to Freddie Knox, who's going to pick it up, throw it to first. For that third out. <laughs> right, as we head into the top of the eighth, Magic Moore one for two with a home run. Eliza Peck 0 for two. Fran Japani 0 for two. Garrison's at 70 pitches, two strikeouts, giving up four hits. B Wolves with a 3 2 lead. B Wolves with three runs on four hits. Water Bullets with two runs on five. In the game, number six. Ariel Parker. The pinch hitter will be uh, rem will be li uh, lifted in order to bring in Smoke Show, the uh, Smoke Snow, I'm sorry. Smoke Snow, <laughs> the catcher. Uh, he's got no errors, 276 average on the season, three home runs. He's tense, and he's not fully healthy. Uh, he's got less than, uh, he's got a little bit better than average speed, a little bit better than average, about average fielding, and a little bit better than average arm. And he'll be taking over, and now at first base, Amelia Kent and Smoke Snow have come into the game. That's a swinging bunt. And, a Kent, and the throw to Kent retires the first batter. Eliza Peck. She's tense. She's 0 for 2 or 0 for 3. And they're going to pull her. They're going to bring in Steve Monstour, who's been playing well. Peck is still struggling. monstour has got good power against right-handers. With the pressure up, Monstour brings good offense to the game. So it'll be exciting to see what, what he might be able to do here. First pitch is in there for a strike. 0-1 to Steve Monstour. Second pitch outside. He flubs it. Ah. It's a liner to Cisneros. Picks it up. Throws it. Two down. Dang damn it. Fran Giapani, the starting pitcher, is locked in and fits. He's 0-2 on the day, though. Hitting 267. Two RBIs on the season. Two outs in the top of the eighth. There may be a substitution here for Japani. And Japani is going to take a seat, and Polk Foster's coming up. Polk Foster's hitting 391 on the season. No home runs in RBI. He's neutral and fit. He does not have very much power. He's got very good contact and uh, not a whole lot of speed down the base pass. Polk Foster. No, Polk. No. Pops that 
first pitch into right field, and Harris makes the catch and retires the sides. <laughs> so uh. coming up in the bottom of the eighth, replacing Fran Giapani will be Benson Rushmore, the relief pitcher. Benson Rushmore has a 5.74 ERA, a 1.54 whip, 21 strikeouts. He's neutral and fit. He's uh, got uh, about average velocity, a little bit less than average junk. He's su his accuracy suffers a little bit, but he's uh, almost fully well-rested. He's got a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, a slider, and a curve. And he's going to take over duties for Japani. Brentwood Garrison 0 for 2. Baca Harris 0 for 3. D Miners 1 for 3 with a home run and a strikeout. Rushmore taking up duties on the pitcher's mind. B Wolves 3. Water Bullets 2 as we head into the bottom of the eighth. Brentwood Garrison 0 for 2. Oh, he's going to get lifted here. And they're going to pinch hit for Brentwood Garrison. They're going to let uh, Menace Wrestles, uh, the right fielder, come in and pinch hit. He's hitting 288 on the season, four home runs, 14 on Reyes. He's neutral and fit. He's got uh, very, uh, very good um, power. He's, he suffers on contact, but he has also has very good speed on the base pass. So if he can get on base, he can make things happen. So the first test for Rushmore will be to get past Menace Wrestles. So that one's a low ball one. Allen's outside, ball two to wrestles looks like there's some empty seats in there in those stands there ball three three balls and no strikes to menace wrestles it's coming up that's in there for call strike three and one wrestles pinch hitting from Brentwood Garrison who had a heck of a game today that's in there for called second strike and the count is gone full three balls two strikes Swing and a miss. Menace Russells goes down on strikes. Hopefully that's not going to come back and bite him as they lifted Brentwood Garrison for that. Brent Baca Harris, the right fielder, steps into the batter's box. He's going to take a look at Benson Rushmore. There's a shot, and that's going into, uh-oh, bad throw. Oh. Left field. Um, yeah, that's going into left field uh, to Buster Biggs, who then threw it to first base instead of second, which wasn't smart because that allowed the runner to get to second. So, uh, Baca Harris at second. There is a swinging bunt, but it was foul. Rushmore steps off the rubber and forces the runner back to second, keeping him honest. That's in the dirt, ball low. Count is even. One ball, one strike with one out in the bottom of the eighth. That's in there for a second strike, and Miners finds himself behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. That's in there for a call, third strike, and D Miners goes down on strikes. Two outs now with Ada Cisneros, the dangerous Ada Cisneros stepping in. Two for three with a home run. Runner at second. Tying run is at second. Lead run, standing at the plate, two outs. That's fouled off along the third baseline, out of play. No balls, one strike. Follow. Allen's low. Cisneros with a reputation of being a bit of a whiffer, although she's been on fire as of late. Two balls, one strike with two outs. Rushmore delivers. That's fouled off along first baseline. The count is even. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. And again, Cisneros as a whiffer. That's fouled off hard along the third baseline. Rushmore looking for the right pitch to put past her. That's fouled off again. Boom off the Suplementos de la Fuega. <laughs> or whatever. Okay. That's in there for cold third strike. Way to go. That's in Rushmore. <laughs> And Cisneros throws the beat bat. Menace wrestles the right fielder. He's going to get pulled after that horrible job of pinch hitting. <laughs> Boo. Boo <to> you. <laughs> Billy Bond, the relief pitcher, will come in. He's hitting 470, 470. He's got a, no, he's not hitting. He's got a 4.74 <laughs> ERA, a 1.58 whip, 29 strikeouts. He's neutral and fit. He does not have a whole lot of velocity. His junk is about average, and so is his accuracy. He's fully rested, though, so. 
He's got some energy going. He's got a four-seam fastball, a slider, and a changeup. As we head into the top of the ninth, B-Wolves, three runs on four hits. Water Bullets, two runs on six. Haley Dexterra is 0 for 3. Billy LeBoint, 0 for 3. Buster Biggs, 0 for 3 with a strikeout. And Bond setting up shop on the pitcher's mound. This is the heart of our lineup. This this part needs to start putting some runs on the board. Dexter is 0 for 3 today. Hitting yes, 304. 0 for 3, Dexter. That's not good. Ball inside. Ball one. Top of the ninth inning. Hopefully the B-Wolves can get some oh, more offense no. here and get that insurance. He pops that up to the shortstop. J-Man gets that just past the infield. Too early, too early. Billy LeBoyne, 0 for 3. He likes the high pitch, playing right field for the Water Bullets. 0 for 3, though, today. That's a smashed foul along the third baseline. That one's inside. Ball one. One and one to LeBoyne. There's a smash in the left field. That's going to be a clean single for LeBoyne. And the B-Wolves got somebody on base here. Sir, and Buster Biggs is up again 0 for 3. That's for 413 on the season, so I can't imagine he'll go 0 for 4. First pitch is never a strike. Only 80 miles an hour from Billy Bond. He doesn't throw very hard. Seventh pitch hits hard down the line, and everyone's going to be going. Around from second to the minors to throw into the third. He's to slide, and he gets in there. It's a nice double. They got runners right. in second and third. Number Franco, the first baseman's tense, but fit. She's 0 for 3 on the day. Runners at first and second with only one out. For cold strike. Strike one. That's smashed up the middle, and that's going to be into center field. And Billy LeBoink has just crossed the plate because, no, you know, he was Bertha waiting for a cab or something. I'm not <laughs> sure. Yes. Bertha Banks. Bertha Banks, two for three, the home run, a single, an RBI, and it's a 4 2 Beebles lead. I feel good about this. You got runners at the corners. They try to pick off Laura Franco at first base. They don't get her. One out. Pressure's way up. That was way outside. Ball one. Bertha Banks is a patient and dangerous hitter. Inside corner, ball two. She's the most walked batter on the team as well. I think you know that. That one drifts inside ball three. She could just watch. He's not going to be Billy Bond's not going to be able to strike her out. Four pitch walk and the bases are loaded. For Freddie Knox, who's one for three with a single today in an RBI, he's hitting 374, feeling neutral. Neutral and fit pressure is up on Billy Bond. Oh no! It's a bunt! Foul. Foul ball. That's inside. One and one to Freddie Knox. That's in there for a called strike. One ball, two strikes. Base is juiced. That's popped up into center field. And here comes no double, play. double play. Guys, dang it. And that was Buster Biggs. He should have been a lot faster than that. <laughs> well, it was shallow center. 4-2. Yeah, that's true. I probably should have. Trust fast Wade, one for three. Justice Man, 0 for three with a strikeout. Amelia can't one for one with a double. Benson Rushmore has thrown a couple of pitches and done a couple of things. <laughs> Trust fast Wade, the center fielder, is neutral and fit. He's, he's one for three with a single. He's known as an RBI man. So Rushmore can't rest on his laurels here. Number 44 has got to make sure he gets a lot of real strong pitches into this good power hitter. First pitch misses outside. That's not what we're looking for. 4-2. <laughs> Bottom of the ninth inning here in Florida. Strike one, one apiece. Beeble's hoping to get one win off these Water Bullets this season of a three-game matchup between these teams. The Water Bullets had the first two. That pitch makes a different strike. He's one and two. That's a rush for throw number 22. Misses outside. To trespass Wade, let's see if he can get one here, Pete. Winds up, throws it. Yeah! Nice curveball. Tip of the hat from Wade. One down and two more to go, Pete. Justice Man, the shortstop, comes up. He's 0 for 3, been blanked all day. He's looking tense. Normally more power than contact. He's a good average batter. Whoa, that one off the hands misses inside ball one. On the count. Much more winds up, throws it. Ooh, got that outside corner. That was really outside. I don't know if the crowd liked this. One apiece, 1-1-1 one, 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 to Justice Man. That one makes it in a nice slider, I think. Uh, low pitch, 1 and 2. He needs one more from Justice Beacon chasing some. Oh, nice inside corner split finger, and he kisses the biceps. Two strikeouts, two down, and Amelia Kent's the only thing standing between him and the save. 
She is, I think, one for one. Amelia Kent, she's not quite 100%. She's a good power hitter. Magic Moore gets that one in for a strike. The outfield's going to drift back a little bit. They're going to play deep for Kent, who could do damage out there in the outfield. This is outside ball one, one apiece. Where does the rush board getting ready to throw pitch number 30? There it is. Inside ball two. Two no counts. Mm. <laughs> two one the count. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. Winds up. Curveball popped up in the right field. Billy LeBoyne coming over for it. He's going to grab it. And that's it, Pete. The B Wolves win. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. It wasn't pretty, but I'll take it. It was a good matchup. What a, what a division rivalry. It was. It was a good rubber, I mean, well, not rubber match because they take it in the first two, ga two games out of the, of the three-game series. But, uh, yeah, I mean, look it at was that, a the, good one. The only the Beebles win seven hits, six hits, only 13 total hits in the game. It was a great pitching duel. Water Bullets get the yeah. first one. Beebles answer. Water bolts get the next one. Beebles answer. Seventh inning, Beebles get one. No answer from the bullets. And then a ninth, they had the insurance. That's well played. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Beebles with four runs on seven hits. Water bullets, two runs on six hits. Uh, I don't know what the, uh, again, Dexter is 0 for 4 on the day. Uh, Peck goes 0 for 2. Uh, Monstour, 0 for 1. Bertha and Banks the, again. Uh, Two for three, but two runs and a home run. Yeah, she's, oh yeah. she's playing lights out right now. An RBI, she and a walk. I, I hope the only she, thing she did do was strike out. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I hope she did. Uh, she doesn't fizzle out before the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. And then over there on the other side, like uh, Harris, Baca Harris, D Miners, uh, one for four. Each were one for four. Cisneros two for four. Really, the only one who hit five hundred. Yeah. Trespass Wade, he's one for four. And then Amelia Kent, who subbed in, she was one for two. But outside of that, nobody else on that team got a hit. The B Wolves rack up 14 Ks on wow. the day. Wow. That's, nice. I like to see that. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, a home run. I mean, four home runs, two for each team. So it was a, it was a day yeah. of the long balls. Just as Man goes 0 for four. Yeah. We're well, looking at pitching. Uh, we start Fran Japani for the B Wolves. She gets the win, right? She should have. She gets. She throws seven innings, gets only five hits in seven innings. Yeah. Two earned runs, walks one batter, drops nine of them, gets two home runs off her, but this is a powerful water ball yeah. team. Her ER, ERA drops to 3.53. She's now 4-2 and two on the season, and she's not done. She's got another regular season game. Her last game will be the last game of the season. Benson Rushmore comes in and gets that save to add to his numbers. He throws two innings, gets only one hit off him, Throws five Ks in two innings. He's, yeah. You know. And he only gave up one hit. I mean, yeah. that's crazy. That's, his, <laughs> that's his, crazy. his ERA drops to 5 3 4. He's now 2 2 2. Who <laughs> wins last two, two, season? Two. Yes. And over for the Water Bullets, Brad, uh, Brett, Brad, Brett, Brad. I think it's Brad. Benson Garrison. Benson, that's it. That's it. I know. I, it's just, you know, I know the Garrisons. They're tight. They live down the street. <laughs> um, Brett, Benson Garrison, he, he, he gets the lost. He, he went eight innings, only gave up four runs. He had two strikeouts on the day, gave up two home runs. His ERA is at 4.62. And his record um, falls to four and four, so he's at 500. Bond came in, pitched one inning, gave up three hits, almost equaled Garrison in one in output in one inning that it took eight innings for Garrison. <laughs> he had one earned run, one walk. His ERA is at 4.85, and his record's 1-5-0. And, oh. and the three stars of the game, holy cow, look at, th look at this. <laughs> who else? Bertha Banks, the third, the B-Wolf third baseman who, who uh, has also been playing lights out in this 11 game stretch or 12 game stretch at this point too uh she went two for three with a home run and rbi scored two runs but yeah you know you, you, you could never can't tell in the season that's this length or about midway yeah. through the season i'm thinking what do why do we need bertha banks <laughs> what is she yeah. doing other than occupying a bit but she's really turned things around she's definitely one of our best she's taken over for um for buster biggs at least in these last few games uh, she's followed the second uh, second star of the game, the B-ranked starting pitcher Fran Japani, who so many times makes it to that to the top three list when she pitches. She threw seven innings, five hits, two earned runs, 
one base on ball. She's uh, she's a diamond in the rough. Yes, she is, and like you said, it, she's been pretty steady. Um, when you think back to the beginning of the season, I mean, Fran Giapani, um twice in the beginning of the season took a hard shots. Yes, from batters, and and we lost her for for a little for she, a little while, and then she comes back, and she's just been little known crazy. fact about her: she can take a punch. <laughs> yes, she, yes, she can. And then the third star of the game was the A-ranked Ada Cisneros, the second baseman. Again, you know, you can't stop her. You can only hope to contain her. She went two for four with a home run and RBI, and she scored a run. So Tommy G, four hits, one home run, two RBIs. He had six strikeouts, a 46% contribution. Pete J with his big three hits. (laughs) I'm telling you. Three hits, one home run, two RBIs. I had one stolen base and eight strikeouts. I got a fifty-four uh, percent. I'll take it, like I said. Yeah. Well, one. Good... I, I don't. What? My thing is, I don't. I don't know if I'll be able to continue broadcasting. Oh. I yeah. like doing it, and I want to get better at it, but I just don't think my machine you can do it, and and it is chugging just so much that it's. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that I don't... next season. I'll take over everything. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Tommy Naperville. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm really hoping to upgrade my CPU, but at this point, um, uh, the timing is just off. And, like, yeah. there's a couple times that Bertha Banks ground ball where um, – She she got the ball I, I literally and started running just for locked. the dugout. I mean, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's because it kind of, I kind of moved her to her right to get the ball, and then it, it lagged, so it just continued – the movement <laughs> just yeah. continued going yeah. there, right? It was funny because yeah, I'm like, she picked it up and it looks like she was just like she thought it was the third out. <laughs> yeah, like, where's she going? That she, oh, turns around and throws it. Luckily, she's got an arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it was lucky. And again, earlier in the game, um, the base running it, it, the same thing. He's coming around, and I, I'm doing a, a speed burst because I'm trying to get her to outrun the you know, see how far I could get him. And I wanted him to stop at third, but then it lagged, so he just rounded third and kept going. And I was like, "Well, no, no, that's yeah. not what I wanted you to do." Well, so um, it is an issue. Yeah. It is an issue. So I don't know how much more I'll be able to do. I like doing it. I really wish yeah. my machine would do it better, though. Yeah. Go ahead. Me. Anyway, uh, I was just going to say uh, one good thing about uh, we're wrapping up. We'll wrap up here, then get back to Phoenix, and where we'll end out the season at home. So we're done with the, the road games. One good thing about being done with the water bolts, we will not have to face them in, in the postseason. Whatever happens, it's either us or them. Uh, we won't be playing them. I don't they're not going to win the wild card. So we got 13 games <clears throat> to report on before we can tell you where we're at in the standings now at this point. Pete, that first game is going to be the Houston Jacks visiting the San Diego Moonstars. You want to run that first? You ready? I certainly will. Right. So, yeah, the Jacks travel to meet up with the Moonstars. And the Moon Stars take an early lead, and it's a back and forth battle. But the Moon Stars win seven three. Then the Moose go visit the Jacks. It's three one Moose. Wide load in the Moon Stars. It's wide loads four to nothing. The Jacks and visit the Gold Coats. It's just these two teams, and it's five one Jacks. The Heaters and the Overdogs, and it's all Heaters all day eight one. Wild Pigs visit the Platypie on the West Coast, and it is four one Platypie. The Wide Loads visit the Moon Stars, and it's a back and forth battle. Moon Stars take it 5 4. Sandcats visit the Warblers in Colorado, and wow, the Cats jump out quick, and they break out in front 9 5. The Hot Corners in the Herbisaurs, and it's Hot Corners 4 3. Overdogs in the Front Runners in Philadelphia, it's Overdogs 4 2. All right, the Blowfish in the Freedom, and it's the Blowfish 8 3. Moon Stars visit the Grapplers up in San Jose. And it is a grapple. It's 12 to 3. How many Moonstar games? Moose and the Crocs, the Crocs 7 1. It's like uh, all Moonstars all day. <laughs> Why don't you what start? did they, t- they take the middle of the season off? What, <laughs> what the hell's going on there? <laughs> uh, you wanna, yeah, yeah, you want to start us off with the Pioneer Conference, Pete? Sure. Pioneer Conference, Pathfinder Division, the Moose. With a record of 26 and 15, are holding first a four game lead. Uh, in first place over the Blowfish and the Crocodons who are sitting at 22 and 19. They got to be the favorite. 
Uh, in the Uncharted division, wow. after all those games, the Platypi have regained first place. They've got a 22 and 19 record, and they got a two and a half game lead now, late season against the the New York Wild Pigs. They seem to be putting a little distance between them and the Wild Pigs. They do. Uh, down in the Journey division, our sister team, the Sand Cats, they're 24 and 17. They hold a slim half game lead over the Arctics, who are sitting just behind them at 23 and 17. And really, it's just by virtue of the fact that the Sand Cats have played one more game than the Arctics. Yeah, yeah, that's that's still a toss up. Hoping for fans to take that. Uh, the Explorer Conference Seafarer Division. Yeah, that is the uh, the the Detroit Heaters have gained first place now. They got a 24 and 17 record, and they are just a half game now in front of those Houston Jacks who are who are 23 and 17. Uh, point to note the overdogs. I mean, this last time we saw them shed a couple big name players, uh, Ronda Horn and Rocket Man, the Rocket Rocket Ramon. I, I still can't get my head around that. <laughs> I still can't, <laughs> you're at the coming toward the postseason. You're letting you're gonna get some money, at, but who are you gonna pick up? Like, who, I don't know. Yeah, they're you're rebuilding. gonna get someone better than than Ronda Horn. You know who they gonna, I, who they think to get for? But yeah, and that's the thing is that my first reaction when I saw that was we should get her, but then I'm like, you know, but we got Bertha Banks playing lights out. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they just what they just won a game too. So mm -hmm. whatever they did, you know. Mm -hmm. In our very own trade division, the B-Wolves back at 500 with a record of 20 and 20, and they hold a three-game lead over um, the Nemesis and the Sirloins, who are just uh, who are tied for second, with records of 17 and 23. That's interesting because our first game back home is going to be against those Nemesis, so that'll be quite a matchup. Okay, we're back at 500. Yeah, you said. Yeah, that's going to be a good one, too, because, again, that three-game series is split right now. So we traveled out to Hawaii, where the Nemesis play, and we split with them. We won one, we lost one. So this is the rubber game of the uh, of the series, and the uh, winner of this is the winner of the of the season set. So the curiosity, it's going to be a time. Yeah, the Curiosity Division, uh, down there, the Saw Teeth have regained first place now, the San Jose Saw Teeth. They have the 22-18 and 18 record. They have only a half game lead against the Colorado Warblers, and um, yeah, I mean that's that's a close pop up too. Now if we go to the season standings and look at the wild card race, Pete, I'll start the Pioneer Conference. Um, you get those, you know, the Moose, the Sandcats, and the Planet Pie are all first place right now. But all of those, except for the Moose, the Sandcats and Planet Pie's lead is tenuous. Uh, so there's other teams that get first place over the Arctics. Have the not only are they battling for first place in their division, but they have the right now they've got the, the lead on the wild card race. They're a game and a half ahead of the Blowfish. Uh, if the Blowfish came up closer, they got a plus 36 run differential. I think that look and that looks like the best in the league. Yeah, that's, for a team that's 22 and 19, they've scored 36 more runs than they've been scored on. That's impressive. Yeah, and just just behind there, uh, um, the uh, burners with a plus thirty-two. So again, with baseball left to play, um, if the burners wind up, you know, tied with the Arctic's or you know, or the Blowfish, like you were saying, then but you know, if they wind up with the same record, by virtue of the run differential, that would give uh, the the Blowfish or the burners the uh, nod over the Arctic. So. Yeah, it's this is the fun time of the season where everything everything you want so badly to start nailing things down so you can start thinking about who you're going to be playing, and yet everything is so up in the air and can change so quickly, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it makes it fun. Over in the Explorer Division, the uh, division leaders, heaters, the heaters, the saw teeth, and the bee wolves would all get a first round buy. They'd be, you know, just brought right in, and then the wild card contender right now are the Jacks, and their record of 23 and 17 gives them a half game lead over the front runners and the Gold Coats. But again, even if the Gold Coats and the front runners could tie up with the Jacks, the Jacks still have the the uh, the go ahead with the plus 23 run differential. And when you look at the Explorer Conference or the Suck Conference, as we should call it, because <laughs> with the exception of the Jacks and the front runners, and the wide loads, but the wide loads have a plus four. I mean, everybody else in wild card contention is all negative. They all, <laughs> yeah. I kind of got to think that maybe the Pioneer Conference is going to 
fare better. I think, the yeah, I, on paper they're the they're the stronger. Because <laughs> now we, to, to be fair though, we've played very well against a lot of those teams. Um, but uh, I don't know about yeah. I mean the Sandcats beat us. We beat the Platypi. The Moose beat us. The Moose yeah. are really the favorites. Yeah, I mean with a, a winning percentage of point six thirty four. And they've um, got you yeah. know Nacho Crisp so. Nacho. <laughs> um, I want I want Nacho. I'm hoping Nacho Crisp plays second base because I want my infield to be Hanley Dexteras and Nacho Crisp. Well, speaking of Hanley Dexteras, Pete, I'm going to the news here. Uh, since the the game, I'm talking about Hanley Dexteras. I'm talking about <laughs> the news here. We got uh, uh, Hanley Dexteras shed a few pounds after a of food poisoning. So I guess he had the shellfish, and it wasn't. Uh, I told him not to. Quite. He's his speed goes from eighty-seven to ninety-four. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm telling because he's a ninety-nine in fielding, right? A yeah. ninety-four now in speed. What was the other bump he got? I don't know. He may he may be the best player in baseball, <laughs> except he's and just he not playing play it. No, no, he doesn't. Yeah. And then the uh, Moose they signed Wedge Wagner replacing Lionel Martinez. So Wedge Wagner did not. Hang out on the free agent wire for too no. long. Wedge Wagner just got cut by the uh, overdogs. The overdogs, yeah. And after the last game, so uh, in the space of uh, 24 hours, the Moose have decided to pick up Wedge Wagner. And boy, that's—I mean, talk about you know the rich getting richer, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, well, and you know, um, Lionel Martinez is not is not bad. I mean, he's 39, uh, but he's. You know, he's a B minus um, first base left fielder. He's got 72 yeah. power, 40 contact. He's good. He's a good fielder. Uh, I mean, but yeah, Wedge Wagner was, well, he was on waivers for a day. That's amazing. The shortstop, yeah. he starts his, his first season at age 25 for the Overdogs. He's there the whole season. They let him go. And now he's ma- now he's making, a, he's making a multiple of what he made before. And he's playing yeah. for a team that's favored to win the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, and wow. yeah, yeah, like I say, and then you talk about the moose, and with the addition of Wedge Wagner, all they do is they lose a little, they lose five off of the fielding. Yeah, but outside of that, he they pick up twenty five on power, they pick up uh, four on connectivity, which again that's kind of a push, but yeah. um, you pick up twenty nine on speed, so he's gonna you know he's gonna be a problem on base paths. Yeah. Uh, you lose five on fielding, but he's still over you know over seventy percent. That's yeah. not, well, and then they- his arm. You pick up forty four on the arm. Yeah. Well, they they paid for it. I mean, uh, presumably they're not looking to get much money left on the table at the end of this. They're kind of they're going all in on this season. They they've got the lead. They want they want that. Team it would to seem that way. Yeah. yeah. They're grabbing the yeah to go for the ring. They got the uh, and and he's also got the moniker of being an RBI man. So yeah. that's who you want for you know. <laughs> yeah. And he's twenty five. So again, he could. You know, as you go into the off season and you start to think of what's going to be our core, how are we going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. What are we going to do? He could very well be one of the main parts of, you know, the main core of your of your team. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even play a full season with the team in his first season. <laughs> going up from there, uh, Smoke Frederick, someone we were looking at, lowers his asking salary. He was asking 980s down to 94. We'll just keep an eye on him. Yeah. And then Rocket Ramon, he lowered his asking price to uh, seven million four hundred thousand. He I, was uh, asking for seven point eight after being released by the Overdogs. I put him. I start him after the last one. He's like, the Rocket Man. I got. I got. I got. I got. I, I got to keep an eye on the Rocket Man. Um, well, I was. I was watching the game again. I watch our own games, guys. I know it's weird, but I, I, I like to watch our own games. And at the end, when you said Rocket Ramon, the first thing out of your mouth was, "I want him." Yeah. <laughs> I want the rock of it. Although, get his, I mean, get his agent on the blower. I want, I want to talk money. Right. Let's get him over here. Let's get him a steak and a cigar, <laughs> see what, and a whiskey. See what he, see what he says. All right, um, going up from there, uh, Eliza Peck. She's got new training available to her weightlifting, which could give her five five door power, a five percent chance to gain an inside pitch preference. So, we'll see. Pretty good. Yeah. And then we go up from there, and Mohamed Smalls got gets signed onto the Nemesis, replacing Javier Hotier. 
And wow. uh, Javier Hotero is uh, a B, second base shortstop. He was thir- 31-year-old second base shortstop. He had 84 power, 63 connectivity, 37 speed, 66 feeling, and a 41 arm. And he was making 7700000 They pick up um, Muhammad Smalls, who's a 36-year-old third base shortstop. He's an overall C plus 51 power, so they're losing 33 on their power. He's a 55 in connectivity. They lose eight on that, so it's kind of a push. Uh, they gain one in speed, which, again, is negligible. You're not going to see one in speed. Uh, f- his fielding is down 18, and that's big because he goes. they go from having a 66 fielder to a 48. That's less yeah. than 50%. That's not good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand that, that move. Uh, we'll see Smalls maybe in the next game. It's got to be a money thing because... Uh, I mean, yeah. Javier Hote, we, we, you know, we've, we've played against him. We've seen him play. He's good. He's a B. You know, he's a B yeah. second base shortstop. Uh, well, I, I like him. I mean, uh, power 84, contact 63. I don't think he'll be on waivers uh, the beginning of next season. No, I don't. And, like, uh, I, I don't know. It seems kind of weird. Uh, we do have a game against the Nemesis. I, I kind of would have th- thought they would have waited till after. Because yeah. if they could, if they can win that game again, that kind of gives them a little bit of boost. They get closer in the standings, and there's a possibility they could take. You know, I mean, they might be able to uh, to steal that first place berth from us. But you know, to, to make a move like this almost seems like they've they've already they're already waving the white flag. Well, real quick, since it's already doing a long form uh, post game show. I was just going to check the league leaders uh, coming up after game 40. We only got four left. I'm looking at batting average. Buster Biggs leading the league in batting average. Not just that, though. We have four batters in the top 10 for batting average. Yeah. Buster Biggs, Magic Moore, Elora Franco, and Billy LeBoink. Wow. And Laura Franco has been struggling as of late. She's she yeah. was up closer to 400 before. So, for home runs, we're going to be facing Jock Sports and the Nemesis. Uh, he's he's tied for second in the league for home runs at 13. So he'll be someone we got to be careful with. He's yes, also, he will. He's also seventh and runs batted in. And Rhonda Horn is ninth, and she's got no team affiliation. Yeah, she's a, yeah she's on waivers, and she's. She's that on the is top ten. Horrible. Unbelievable. Horrible. RBI is thirty-five, and you let her go. I, I don't know. There is no good reason for that. It's just <laughs> on base percentage. Buster Big second, four point four four one. Nemesis got yeah. Jack Sports. He's at four oh six. Yeah. Slugging percentage. Bertha Banks at point six oh two. Just makes the list. Around a horn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sixth at six point uh, point six two zero. Jacques Sports at six forty four, just above her. Um, it looks like it. I mean, you know, just uh, don't pitch to Jacques Sports. <laughs> yeah, just, well, just yeah, walk. be careful what you throw to him. Yeah, I don't even know where he's at. We'll find out soon. But uh, batting hits, Buster Biggs leading the league in hits by not a small margin. Seventy. Wow, seventy no, that hits. Is not- a small yeah. large. He's 12 more than Billy LeBoink, who's second, is tied for yeah. with Jack Cracker. Just quietly. You know what I mean? LeBoink just shows up to the Paul Park and does his job. You know what I mean? But Buster Biggs is he's MVP. He's got to be. Yeah. Extra base hits. I can't. Rhonda Horn at 25. She's second. Yeah. What? what and they, they, they just caught her loose. Get, get on the horn with, <laughs> with Santa Monica there. Yeah, what get, the heck? They're doing? <laughs> <laughs> get, uh, get around the horns of AJ Don. Look at her a steak and a cigar, too. Uh, all right. Uh, strikeouts. We don't have anyone in the strikeout. What happened to... Uh... Oh, these are strikeouts, so, I'm, so we don't... I was going to say they had yeah. batters, not people. Batting for still, stolen bases. Stolen Buster Biggs. Buster Biggs. Yeah, he's got to get a couple more. we got to start to put some distance between him and Yoink Sacks. We're going to see Yoink Sacks at the last, uh, last game of the season. We are, we are. Look at that caught stealing. So there, there may be a little bit of a, a, a you know, an internal battle, you know, outside just not just the game, but there'll be the fight between Buster Biggs and Ewing Sachs trying to end the season with the most steals. Yeah. Yeah, Ewing Sachs does not get caught stealing, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, pitching. Let's take a look. Where Where's our people? 
save. We don't have anybody on there. Neither, no, nor do the Nemesis. Pitching two. Okay. Curly Bender's got the third best whip. Bellamy at ball still does too. She got released. She's on waivers and she's in the top ten for whip. And, and on Curly um, Bender yeah. average. Should star be Bellamy ball. Strikeouts. It's good. it's a run and gun battle between Hurley Bender and Almost Slayer. Yep. And Fran Japani again. She's got one more game. Um, yeah. I'd say she's out of it. I don't. I mean, we could possibly see her do a 10, 10, another ten inning. I mean, ten K okay. game. Well, Hurley, but Hurley, I don't think. I don't think she get over thirteen. Hurley's got us. And Ans Ansel Caros. He's he's going to be playing. He's going to be pitching against Bender. So Caros is the he's ninth for, in the league for strikeouts. And he's, we're going to see both of those guys play tomorrow. Bender's got his last chance to try and be the strikeout king for the season. Very cool. Strikeouts in nine. The big two. Yep. Yeah. We're doing pretty well. We're doing yeah. pretty well. I, we're yeah. at 20 and 20, and our run differential is at a negative three so i would like to see us end the season uh, with a you know in a positive win with pop more wins than losses and i'd like us to be even if it's just plus two in the rough run differential i'd rather finish in the plus territory than in the negative yeah yeah schedule yeah if we, boy if we could win three out of four it's all home now the nemesis that's going to be a tough game the outlaws and the hot corners and the herbivores we should beat so, um, but there you are. Although I wouldn't, don't count your chickens because we have, right. we've already beat them twice, and sometimes the game kind of, yeah, you know, <laughs> you've already won twice, so they can win one. Right. All right. Well, that long game. Then we'll wrap up here from Florida, finish off our regular season road trips, and uh, we'll head back to Phoenix and finish off the season there against the nemesis and until then this is tommy g and this is pete j and before i let you go i'm going to say if you want to watch the full game again head over to tommy g's gaming channel on youtube and he puts together a really nice package of highlights from the previous game and he does a lot of really cool stuff so if you want to see the game again and you want to see it with a little bit more spit and polish you'll want to watch tommy's uh, feed. So um, this is PJ, and I am saying celebrate the win, but get out of here.